Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. I thought I'd start this one off a little bit differently with a sneak peek of the end result. What motivated me to make this video is kind of paying homage to the first tank I ever got. It was a stainless steel uh, framed uh, five gallon tank. And if uh, you've ever seen them, uh, they're held together with this black uh, tar-like goop and I thought I would try making something <laughs> similar. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a, a wooden frame tank. Uh, stainless steel is way too expensive and also I'm really bad at molding. So we're going to make a wooden frame. It should be more than strong enough. This is going to be about a 10 gallon size tank, so a little bit bigger than the one I originally had. And if you remember uh, when I was making the underground filters, uh, a lot of people like the seeing uh, the old styles come back. Uh, so that's the other motivation for this, to uh, give you guys a glimpse of things uh, before silicone came around. Now what I'm doing here is, uh, while I was doing the intro, is I'm setting up some templates. Uh, I'm going to make a wooden frame, like a picture frame kind of thing. And I want to make a guard and a template so that, first off, my fingers don't go anywhere near it while I'm doing the cuts because I find uh, pine is really quite soft and splinters and this will keep everything where I need it to be and if anything breaks uh, it's not going to go flying around. Now the thumbnail says don't build this and I actually mean that from the sense of don't use <laughs> don't use the putty that I'm going to use uh, even if you find the black goop if it exists somewhere uh, don't use that either silicone it together. If you actually use the this frame and silicone the tank together it would probably last 30 years and that's kind of cool but uh, I've never actually built a putty or like I said tar tank uh, held together with a frame uh, and I wanted to give that a go. I mean I've built tons and tons of tanks out of silicone and I know how that's all going to respond to uh, stresses and stuff but this may show me something uh, different because there's nothing really holding the tank together except this wooden frame. And then the putty is just going to be uh, the waterproof sealant uh, that will just hopefully keep it from leaking, at least for a little while. So there you go. I made the frame. All I did was make two templates, uh, one for the horizontal and one for the vertical, and I've cut that groove out. and off camera I also notched it out so the front part can nest inside and uh, make a nice uh, solid frame. Now you can do dovetails, you can do all kinds of stuff, uh, you could cut it at an angle and uh, make this a lot neater looking, uh, but I'm not a carpenter. Uh, I make a lot of uh, structural stuff out of wood, but <laughs> fine cabinetry kind of thing is not my stuff. I mean I don't mind trying it out uh, for my own kind of thing, but I don't do that for clients. You know, usually if there's a build um, there's usually renos going on at the same time and whoever's doing the millwork for the office uh, I get them to also do the millwork for the tank so it all matches up and uh, it's just simpler that way. So what I've done at this point is I've glued the frame, uh, the base and the top and I just put a lot of weight on it to keep it uh, flat because I don't have any of the proper clamps for that sort of thing and then using the same process I uh, glued on the verticals and from my perspective, all that really mattered at this point was making sure that uh, it was square. And once that was done, uh, I need to go on to the next step, which is, you'll notice the on the bottom here and also on the top, uh, the overhang on the left and right. And I wanted to make that nice and even. And the only, uh, well, the easy way of doing that is to uh, set up the blade so that it is uh, the height of the thickness of the base, uh, set the guard, and then just have, when I run it through the, uh, the saw, it'll just just miss uh, the verticals there. And then what that happens is, uh, once I've done the bottom on the left hand side, let's say, I will also trim the same side on the top, and then flip it around and do uh, the exact same thing for the other side, and that way it all matches up. So this is the blade setup. And I'm just going to run it through the saw. I'm not going to film any of that because uh, my camera was having issues and I only had my phone to do this with. Uh, but it's a very easy skim. Uh, it's not hard to do. And that's the joint. 
you'll notice there's lots of glue sitting on there. All of that will be sanded off. Uh, it's <laughs> not my favorite step, but it needs to be done. So this is the beginning of the frame. It's uh, Everything is where it needs to be now. I want to add a little extra rigidity, so I'm going to use a quarter inch doweling on uh, both the base and the top. Now, they're going to be done differently though. Uh, the base, I'm just going to flip it over and drill a, a quarter inch drill bit through it with a, a little bit of a, a marker on it just to get the, a rough the depth gauge on it. And then I'm going to use quarter inch doweling. Now, quarter inch doweling in a quarter inch hole is actually a really tight fit and as I said when I was running uh, the framing through the saw uh, splitting it is an option <laughs> and a hazard uh, in this case not so much a hazard but it would just make it look ugly and I didn't want to have to go through and uh, put putty and whatnot to uh, make it look better again and also I think it would uh, lose some of the strength of it split so what I'm going to do is for the first time ever is I'm going to run a doweling uh, in the lathe and just take a couple hundreds off just to give it a bit of a loose fit to it. <laughs> because I've never actually uh, lathed wood before. I mean, wood turning, there's nothing really special about it. It's just, it's just different. Uh, one thing I did, though, while I did it is I left a really rough finish on it uh, because uh, it's just going to grab the glue better, and that would give me a, an extra bit of uh, strength to this. I'm not actually concerned about this um, bowing out or uh, popping apart or anything that like that. Uh, a 10 gallon tank really has uh, limited pressure as, uh, from that perspective. I just want to give it, once this is vertical, like this is, going, this is the bottom you're looking at now, once I put it up vertically, the upright that's going to be there is going to want to move out. And then, because that's going perpendicular to the line of the doweling, it's going to add an awful lot of strength. Now, how I'm going to do the top and the bottom is going to be completely different. Uh, the bottom, I'm just going to uh, cut them a little oversized. Uh, I'm going to trim them down like this. And then I'm going to glue them in place, because it, it's a nice fit. It's nice and loose. I don't have to worry about any uh, strain on the wood or anything. And then... Uh, I'm going to pound them down so they're nice and snug, then I'm going to uh, trim those off. Like, uh, just put them through the saw and then sand them down flush. But for the top, uh, it can't be done that way. Because I can't actually assemble the entire frame until the tank's built. Uh, it has to be in two pieces. The top has to be removable. Because if you consider this being the top, which uh, uh, if it were... Uh, the glass is going to go all the way up inside the frame, and there's no way for me to seat that into place uh, with the top on, so it has to be added last. But because I won't be able to uh, like tap these in, sand them down afterwards with all that uh, glass and putty and everything, because it'll be really heavy at that point, I need to do that initially, like set it all up. So what I'm going to do when I get to that part, is I'm going to use a depth gauge, and I'm going to trim them, because I mean, when you use a, a piece of uh, marker on a, on a drill bit, they're not accurate enough. I may end up with one hole that's a little more shallow than the others, so what I'm going to do is uh, make sure that all the doweling is cut to the shallowest hole. So some of them might be uh, a little off in the sense there'll be a bit of an air gap at the bottom, but that part won't be a problem at all. That's, <laughs> that's not an issue. The issue would be if, like I said, if one is sticking up because it's going to be really hard to do all that sanding that you see that I need to do and trim all that once it's all assembled. Now to tack it into place I had the bright idea just I'll just put a dab of glue and then I'll put a bunch of weight on it make sure everything's uh, squared and framed wherever I want it to do and then that little dab of glue well, it'll just be enough to hold it in place while I do the drilling like this. <laughs> Apparently it has really good glue. Uh, it was actually a real pain trying to get that top off without you know actually damaging anything. And I think in a couple of spots I did end up uh, flaking off a little bit of uh, the pine, but the end result is that it held together. So what I'm doing now is the part I don't like at all about woodworking, and that is gradually sanding everything down. I uh, started off with 60, uh, went to 120, uh, then 200, and then 400, and 600. It's just, 
it's a long, tedious process, and I'm okay at it. I can get a reasonable finish, uh, but it's not something I enjoy doing. So once it's sanded down, uh, this is going to hold water, uh, or at least for a little while. It's going to uh, attempt to hold water anyway. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to seal this. So it's going to get uh, a number of coats of erythane, and between every two coats I also have to sand that down to give a reasonable finish. If I was really concerned about it, uh, I would have uh, sprayed it on, uh, but again, like I said, this is uh, just a more like a thought experiment for me. Uh, so I am going to uh, just use a brush. So you can see a few brush strokes there. Also when I lifted that up you could see uh, the little bit of splintering that happened uh, underneath where the glue was. It's crazy how strong that thing is. So here I'm going to use the depth gauge to get the hole set and then I'm going to cut the dowlings to the, sh uh, the most shallow hole and then uh, use them in a lathe. And this is going to be done, uh, like I said, a little differently. I'm going to seat these in place just uh, without glue first and then I'm going to make sure it all fits properly. And one of the things I really need to do at this point is mark uh, where the front left is. That's why I chose front left, but it doesn't really matter. Just so they all go together exactly the way it's supposed to go together. So these are going to be flush, and then I'm just going to snug it in and make sure they stay flush when it's uh, down in proper position. And then I'm going to glue all that together. Now this video has gone really long, I'm sorry about that. Uh, like I said, I wanted to initially, <laughs> I thought I was just going to do this in one go. Uh, the whole thing, uh, but this is just getting uh, stupid long already. So uh, next Wednesday I am going to actually glue this all together and fill it up with water. I mean, sorry, uh, no glue. I'm going to use the putty to put this all together and then fill it with water and uh, see how that all works out. And I suspect it will hold water for at least a while. Uh, and then I'm going to see how that all works and hopefully learn something from this process. And then in the end, I really do think uh, the end result will be I'm going to take this apart again. Uh, one of the things I decided to do at this point here, after going to all the trouble of setting this all up, is I'm not going to glue these into place. The top is not going to be glued on. It's just going to be held in by friction. And in the end, we'll see how, that if, if, like I said, when I want to put this as silicone, uh, I will end up redoing that. And then it'll be easy to take apart. So if you like the style of video, please like and or subscribe. I know this is a <laughs> quite a departure from my usual videos, uh, but uh, hopefully it'll be uh, an interesting look to it, if nothing else. And then, like I said, we'll see if it holds water. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you uh, <laughs> think my chances are good or not. And uh, next week we'll fill that up, and uh, then we'll know. Thanks again for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.